We've got about 30 seconds until the end of practice. There's the practice checker. Our drivers should be coming to completely uncontrolled wall uh, supporting stops. But the practice session is over now. I'm Michael Root. I will be your announcer tonight as I announce all of these races. There's Mike Kelly trying to get his car in new and interesting places. Uh, you'll have to forgive me tonight. I think like 50% of the world, I currently have a cold that I'm getting over. So I'm going to probably be a little raspy. I'm going to do my very best with my cough button. Uh, so hopefully you don't get any blaring coughs in your uh, ears. Uh, as we go through tonight, this is our typical Summit Point format. It's a 30-minute race. We have three groups this year. We'll be running Mustangs, the VWs, and the Miatas. So as we're finding out, our, our VWs and our Miatas are relatively mixed up for most of the race. The, uh, the VWs don't typically tend to be as fast as the fastest Miatas, uh, but they're faster than most of the rest, so they, they tend to stay at about top middle of the pack of the Miata pack uh, which makes for some interesting uh, multi-class racing the Mustangs um, unless they halfway destroy their car and have to go to the pits to have them rebuilt which does seem to happen to about half of them um, they uh, dominate the front of the pack and tend to tend to be going several seconds faster around the track so tonight we are back at Summit Point, which for the Washington, D.C. region is our home track. We know this track very well. A lot of these folks drive this track in real life on a regular basis all the time. Uh, at least five or six times a year, typically. It is located in West Virginia. It is a very historic track. It's been around for a very long time. The Washington, D.C. region has been around since 1946. Um, and I believe this track is at least that old. Um, so when you look at the history of racing, that's pretty close to, uh, when it started. I mean, you're, you're really looking at, I think the thirties is when it really began. So, uh, very historic track, very good track, very well designed, uh, 10 laps over 2.2 miles. We have, will at some point in the race, probably do a virtual lap. Uh, depends on uh, how busy our action is and how busy I am trying to follow that action. We will be doing our typical rolling start. So you see that we have a pace car out there. That pace car will take these guys around on a pace lap. And then they will all, you know, hopefully have warmed up their brakes and their tires as they're rolling up on the... Uh, the start tower which you can see right there to the top left corner right under the word race is the start tower uh, and that's where the gentleman with the green flag and the checker flag sits um, actually right behind him you can see all those windows that's where timing and scoring is so one of the things that is done uh, especially with the Washington DC region uh, and I believe not necessarily required at all of SCCA but WDCR definitely does it is uh, all cars have electronic timing through a uh, module that's in their vehicle as they cross a, the start finish line that records their lap times however we do have a group of folks that sit in that timing and scoring office and they manually time and score all of the cars so that if there's any issues with the digital recording you have a manual backup uh, this is also important because you may have people who have placed their transponders in different parts of their car. Now, 
I don't know anybody that would place their transponder in their rear bumper, but there are some people that maybe place it in their front bumper and other people that place it against the firewall, which is right by the driver. Uh, I know in my car in particular, it is on the firewall. That's because that's where it came and I don't see a reason to uh, fix anything that isn't broke. So with that being the case, as those two cars are coming across the start finish line, if we are nose to nose and somebody has their transponder in the front end of their car, I may actually cross the start finish line ahead of them, but my transponder crosses after their transponder. So in that case, the manual scoring would override the digital scoring and actually say that uh, my car finished that race. And we actually had a race uh, this last season where we finished 0 0.038 seconds apart. Um, and when you're that close, that is definitely, you know, less than four hundredths of a second. It could have been transponder placement for sure. So it is good that we do still do that manual backup. Quick mention to our sponsors tonight. Uh, the Washington DC region is sponsored by some key sponsors that have sponsored us for a while. Uh, OG Racing, which is your place to get all your racing safety equipment, fire suits, helmets, gloves, Nomex underwear, socks, whatever you need, they have it. Um, OG Racing has both online and physical stores in the Northern Virginia region. And then We also have Radial Tire in Silver Spring, Maryland, who is one of our longtime sponsors. Great place to get tires. They will shave your tires, which some of these guys uh, run tires that you buy from the factory that are slick and they don't need to be shaved. But there are some classes, like mine, where you actually buy street tires and they have to be shaved uh, to go faster. So uh, Radial Tire is a place for everything you need, whether you got a minivan or a race car. Uh, they're a great place to go. And then new this year is RacingJunk.com, your racing classifieds, everything you ever needed uh, for a car. If you're looking to get into racing, I highly recommend you check out RacingJunk.com. Green, green, green. And there's our green flag. Off we go. And you can see in the front our pack of Mustangs. Very calmly gunning it down the straight going into turn one. Michael Monahan there on the inside, very well controlling that situation, keeping uh, Greg Obadiah on the outside as we come through turn three. So Michael Monahan out in front, and Greg in second. And go ahead and. Drop our loop so we have a little bit more visibility here. Give us a little bit more screen as we go through this track. See Michael pulling out in front of Craig. Behind them we've got Francois Bru in third. Don Manning in fourth. Way off the uh, apex there. Definitely want to be uh, touching those tires to the inside can candy canes uh, to take maximum speed through that corner. In fifth place, we have Lewis Alessi, who's right now keeping up with the Mustangs in the uh, our first Volkswagen car. So first in class right now, fifth overall. You can see right behind him, Dave Fitzgerald in the Martini number nine. And James Saffel bringing up third and final in the class of the Volkswagens. These guys are staying quick early in this race, staying out in front of everybody. First in our Miatas is David Alessandrini, frequently at the front of the pack. Behind him, uh, number 97, Kevin Fireline. Definitely see some action here. We got Sam Scott and Carter Whedon battling it out. This is Carter Whedon in the number 22. Looks like he's uh, sporting a monster car. Yep, that looks like a monster car to me. 
Uh, Sam Scott, his typical UMBC car. Kenneth Huzel in the 23, Valvoline. Mike Kelly in the number 56. I don't expect Mike's going to stay this far back in the pack the whole race. He'll probably uh, gain some places. We'll see how that goes. Mark Wood here, number 41. Peter Phillips in number 27. Usama Talha in the number 20. Just past um, Travis Trussell, who looks like he's falling in the back. We'll get to him. This is not Travis. This is uh, um, Ayub Tala, who uh, is probably Usama's relative. They have the same last name, so I'm just going to presume. Uh, Rick Cohn in the number 18. Uh, and Travis Trussell in the pits. That's what happened. Travis must have uh, made a little bit of a mistake and is back here getting that mistake fixed. Uh, we also had Khalil Naderboff tonight, who I believe was going to run a Mustang, but uh, is not currently in the race. So as you can see, we still have Michael Monahan out in front. He has about a, a two-second gap over uh, Greg who's got three and a half seconds over Francois, who's got another two seconds over Don Manning. So our uh, Mustangs are actually relatively well spread out, as you can see here. Still pretty close in our VWs. Um, staying out in front of that Miata pack, they've got about two tenths of a second now, Lewis is actually running, well, they ran a little bit slower that lap. The Miata's uh, David Alessandrini is going to catch up at that kind of rate. And as a matter of fact, he just passed James Snell. Oh, sorry, Saffel. So, now this is an interesting position for David to be in. As we look here, as we look at Kevin, who is a second place Miata, you can see how David is up there in front of the Volkswagen. This is going to make it difficult for Kevin to catch David because there's sort of this creating this space by mixing up these classes really uh, gives David an advantage. Of course, David really needs to run pristine uh, to keep up with that. I just heard somebody hit the wall. That might have been Mark Wood. Yeah, he's pulling over. I think he did some damage there. and He is... Uh, he is uh, trying to get that fixed. Kevin Fireline here chasing David still, but he's going to have to also get around James Saffle, uh, who he's not racing against for position, but uh, is obviously a factor when you're on the track. be interesting to see what happens here in turn one he doesn't have enough speed really to make a pass on the inside here it looks like he's gonna try anyways yeah I think that was a bit of a miscalculation definitely allowing Carter who took more of a traditional line to keep more speed coming through and that as you can see is paying off here going into turn three Carter able to just blow past um, Kevin uh, which also slowed him down because he wasn't able to take turn three properly. And uh, Sam Scott backing out. But, uh, you know, really sort of compromised his, uh, his position. Interesting watching these three here of what's exactly is going to happen. see there David still out in front Carter leading through 10 always a great shot of these guys flying through the start finish line
you can see now David has caught up to Dave and uh, might start pushing him down the track if they don't get on that accelerator. David really is flying in this Miata. I mean, he has run uh, a couple of laps faster than the Volkswagen's uh, last couple of laps. But now we're getting a Mustang mixed into it. Looks like Don Manning uh, is about to get passed by some of the Volkswagens. So, really some mixed interclass racing here. This track is very technical. I mean, it is, to do this track, I'm, anybody can drive around Summit Point. Okay, so, so like we have a, a track day performance driving experience program. You could bring any car out here and you can go fast around this track. You can fly down this track and have fun. But if you want to absolutely go as fast as possible, this track is very technical. Looks like we just had a big pass there. Oh, but Carter Whedon not able to hold it. Doing doing that inside pass but just had way too much speed and just flew off the track oh wow he gave up uh, at least three positions there so back to what I was saying earlier um, you know this really is one of those things that if you really want to go super fast on this track you really have to optimize your lines and you really have to hit your apexes and really one of the tricks is is you you have to be on the gas a lot. So we say from this point here, uh, well, well, when we do the lap, I'll walk you through it. But this is essentially, even though it looks like you're taking a bunch of turns, it's essentially a straightaway for a lot of people. We're going to go ahead and jump into Mike's car here because I want to take you through Summit Point. So here going through turn one, you can see uh, he stayed to the inside there. As it... As it exits out to the left coming in here into three you definitely want to sort of hit your brakes and come in touch the left side you got to be careful not to go too wide here you don't want to get in the gravel now this is coming through here this short stretch we really consider this a straight you hear him lift a little bit there but a lot of people just stay in the gas you have a really hard break going into five this is really a throw everything you know hard break into the turn now as we're coming through six this is sort of a right, left, right pattern, and you can just stay in the gas the whole time. You hear him upshifting here? He is just staying in the gas, he's shifting, he's accelerating, he is just blazing through that. So even though those were a bunch of turns through a carousel, he didn't lift. He was just on the gas the whole time. And then coming here through 10, again, maybe a little off the gas, left foot brake. Take this turn way faster than you expect. Um, I mean, he came out of that turn over 100 miles an hour, to give you some idea. Um, and then we're flying down the straight. He's probably going to hit close, yep, 130 miles an hour. Um, and then he's going to hit his brakes right here at the third, 300 cone mark back into turn one. So you can see, doing this track, it is very technical um, if you're going to do it fast. And Michael Monahan can drive this track fast, that's for sure. But it is... Uh, it's very technical. You really have to put the wheels in the right places. You have to stay in the gas way more than you think. Um, it's very deceptive. I mean, this is a hard break, and turn one is a hard break. But other than that, there's a lot of left foot braking. There's a lot of, uh, like here, right? That's the last time you brake. And then here, you're accelerating. He's accelerating. I believe last time he shifted there, he's accelerating. He's still accelerating, right, as he pulls through here accelerating accelerating you know these are turns and he's not even lifting he's just accelerating and you see here going under the bridge he's getting up towards 120 miles an hour and then he's going to break a little bit so it takes turn 10 about 85 miles an hour exiting the turn he's at 100 so it's just absolutely amazing um the raw speed of this track you know you would think 10 turns, you'd be slowing down and breaking a lot more. Uh, not here. I mean, it is just absolute speed uh, is the name of the game. 
for those of you that are racers and are watching this, you know, hopefully some of that helps you uh, with some of this track. Some of these tr turns are more tricky than they seem, like right there, turn three. This turn is, is crazy difficult, um, whereas turn four really isn't that complicated. Right here, this quote turn where you're essentially just gunning it the whole way through, it's not technically complex, but it definitely is um, a gut check. It is like courageously complex. You really have to just have faith that you're not going to fly off the track and have the courage to stay in the gas and accelerate through that turn. Um, that's that's really the trick to turn four, whereas turn three has just got a whole lot going on with it. Uh, to take that fast, I mean, there's some guys that can take that turn blazingly fast, uh, and it, it, is, it is difficult, as is 10. I will say to take 10 correctly is very difficult. It's easy to fly through with your tires squealing. It's easy to slow down and take 10, but to do 10 fast and smooth is actually quite difficult. Here we're going to watch an MX-5 go around this track a little bit. David uh, Alessandrini just passed Dave Fitzgerald. He's now behind Lewis and Lessie. Sorry for sort of a long vocal break, folks, but uh, like I said, I'm kind of getting over something here. So, well, getting over is kind of a lie. I'm in the middle of it, but uh, I'm going to soldier on. You see there, wow, exactly what I was talking about. Just flying through turn four, doesn't even lift, just blazing through. Um... I think here you'll see a little break going into six. He took that a little bit tight to the right. Um, and he didn't fully apex or uh, exit out there on the turn. Uh, I think he's getting a little fixate on the... Yeah, he's definitely getting fixate on that car in front of him. Um, he's not driving his own car right now. He's driving Lewis's car. That happens to racers. He needs to just kind of back off, drive his own car. A um, little bit of an overslow there. So, I mean, David's a great driver, and he's doing a great job. But he's, uh, he's definitely sort of needs to fixate on his own line and not follow Lewis's line, because Lewis's line is going to be slow for David. Um, here, David's going to try to make a pass on the inside over break. I don't think he's going to make it. Maybe coming out of the turn. That was a good pass by David. I actually think it was sort of a bad let by by Lewis. I think he let David go when he really didn't have to. Uh, if he would have taken his car more to the inside, put more pressure on David, not allowed him as much room, and stayed in the gas, I think he would have been able to hold that. Um, but you can really see here how like going through turn four and five, David's car is really on the edge of grip which is where you want to be, right? You just want to have that feeling of being almost completely out of control. That's when you know you're going fast. He could improve his entrance there into uh, nine. You know, not to be nitpicky, but if he was a little bit farther out before he entered in, he could take it faster. Really nice handling of 10 there. Um, it was going quite fast for Miata, so that, that was impressive, uh, even though he put two off. Good downshifting. Misses Apex by a little. Go on, track out. Track out, not really tracking out. He could be taking that a little faster. could sort of see that rear end just wants to, to kick out in three 
Uh, David's not letting it. A little wobbly there through four. Sorry, I'm nitpicking you, Dave, but you're racing pretty well, so I figured I got I want to talk about something. See how he does here. A little late on the gas. Tracking out a little bit more. Cleaner that time. And if you notice, he came out of nine faster because he used more of the track. And he caught up to that Mustang a bit more. But when the Mustang hits the straights, he's just got the horsepower. Um, it makes it very hard for David to catch. But here, coming out of ten... David definitely gained some speed there on that Mustang, but once we hit the straightaway, you see the Mustang disappears again. Because he could just put his foot down and the car just goes. Uh, the Miata doesn't really have that option. If you don't keep your speed up, uh, there really is no catch-up horsepower. Michael Monahan is catching lap traffic now. Catch up to the back of the pack of the Miatas. We're about halfway through the race. Actually, we're a little over halfway through the race. Um, so this is to be expected. Now, the way Michael's driving, he is just going to probably blow through this. Um, you can see some of the more experienced racers here. They know when it's time to get out of the way of the race leader, and they get out of the way. So I will say the number one rule in racing that we teach rookies and new folks is stay your line. Okay? If you stay on the line, you're predictable and it's easy for the guy who's faster than you to pass you. However, with that said, more experienced racers uh, will come off the line in, in situations like this because they'll see that race leader coming in behind them and they'll move off, giving them room to fly on by, especially if you're in the back of the pack. Now, um, I will say, when I'm out there in mixed class racings, the... Uh, RX-7s typically, ooh, we got somebody going off track here, it looks like, hard for me to tell who that was, I think it was 199 maybe, anyways, um, no, it wasn't 199, so when you're, if you're actually in the front of the pack of your class, and you have faster cars coming up, often you won't see them move off the line because they're competing for first, second, or third place every, you know, thousands of a second counts, and they're just going to allow that faster car to make the pass as they should. Um, in general, the rule of stay your line is always the best one to follow. When in doubt, stay your line. Don't come off the racing line. Just drive your racing line. Let the faster car pass you. In situations like we saw, obviously it's not a big deal, it's no problem, but a little bit of racing, sort of, I don't know what to call it, race craft, um, but etiquette maybe. David in the 91 car still chasing Don. Uh, it's going to be very hard for David to catch Don. I mean, these guys are running very similar lap times, I and mean, honestly Don's pulling about a tenth of a second faster lap time. Uh, in that case, only three hundredths of a second faster. But he is pulling a slightly faster lap time, and that really is because he has a car with four times the horsepower. So, uh, you know, unless he makes a mistake, it is going to be hard for David to catch him. Not that David needs to catch him. David could probably care less about catching him unless he's made some sort of personal goal to himself to catch the guy, which I've been in that situation. Um, you're not racing against somebody, but you're just like, I know I can catch this guy. Um, realistically, it just might not even be possible. But, uh, good luck to David. Uh, not far behind him are Lewis, who is up in front of Dave Fitzgerald, who's second place in a Volkswagen cars. And, uh, we got Carter Whedon coming up on their tail. Not a surprise to me, even though we saw Carter go off, that he is back up, catching up to the front of the Miatas. Carter is quite a good driver. 16, 17 years old. Um, I'm sure his dad will correct me, but he is a uh, high school age. Uh, races Legends cars. Really is a great guy, he's a great racer. Uh, yeah. And I like
like his car this time. The Monster Energy car. It's pretty neat. I definitely hear somebody behind Carter. There's Sam Scott trying to catch up. Keep it up well with uh, being in third place. Mike Kelly in fourth. Told you he was going to move up in the pack. Um, still doing quite well. Watch Sam and Carter battle it out here for a little bit. So I wanted to bring us up here to the front of the race. Of note, unlike some of our previous races, our race leader is not running away with this one. Greg Obadiah is only 1.4 seconds behind the leader, which is, at this point, a very close race because he has managed to stay up to the front of the pack this entire race. Um, Don Manning, who's in third place, is 39 seconds behind the leader. So really, it's... It's these two guys who will be battling it out in the Mustang class. Unless they both take each other out and Don Manning gets first. Which I have seen happen in real races. Uh, I saw four Miatas coming through a turn. Ten, four wide on the last lap. And all take each other out. With allow fifth place get first place. Uh, very happy guy that day, by the way. So Michael running a quick lap there, a 121.4, Don a 121.6, which puts him 1.7 seconds behind the leader, but yet this is still very close. Of note, fastest laps, Michael has run a 119.7, which I think is the fastest lap we've seen yet on Summit Point in our series. Um, and then a 124 for Greg, so... You know, the speed, there is more speed there to be reclaimed. So we'll see how these guys do as they go forward in this race. Um, leaving our Volkswagens behind, Mike Kelly, Sam Scott, and Carter Weed in here. Uh, Carter a little farther up, so he's been able to increase his lead. He's currently chasing down Lewis in the Volkswagen to try and catch up to David. But uh, he's... I think about five seconds behind David. Uh, here's James, who appears to be quite a bit behind David. Uh, about six seconds. And you see David here behind our Miatas. Greg making up about a tenth of a second uh, in his gap on his last lap. We're going to keep our eye on that. Uh, Lewis Leslie way out in front for the Volkswagens. You can see him up there of this four-car line. He is the one in front. Uh, and then you have Carter, Sam, and Mike Kelly. So it looks like our battle, if we're going to have one, is probably going to be either for first and second of the Mustangs or second, third, and fourth of the Miata. So we're going to keep our eye on these races. Of course, anything could happen as we progress. Pop on back, take a look at some of the racers. Francois Brew back here. Still going. His fastest lap at 122.2, which is actually faster than Don Manning's fastest lap, who's in third. But Don's probably most likely just been more consistent throughout this. Um, I think Usama's going to call it quits. Looks like he's uh, pulling off to the side, trying to restart his car, get it towed into the pits. Still have Mark Wood going in the back back here. 
back up at our top three still running very close to one another no more than uh, two seconds between all three of them about 210 to go before I completely lose my voice as we see uh, Michael Vonahan able to increase his lead he is about we're going to turn our uh, I'm going to turn my loop back on here in case you guys are curious but uh, Michael increasing his lead to 2.1 seconds so he is definitely not going to go down Um, James still falling farther behind Dave. Dave keeping up with the Miatas. Mike Kelly now the only one behind Lewis. Sam Scott and Carter Whedon able to pass him. Got Mike Kelly going off in five. He's going to get back on the track. I don't know if that's going to cost him a penalty. I don't think so. Um, he came back on. If he had cut across, he definitely would have gotten a penalty. But I don't think he actually shaved any time off of the lap. David now able to catch up to Lewis because all, all the Miatas have passed him. Now we've got a battle for first and second of the Mustangs. Uh, first and second of the Miatas, much closer. Let's see what's going on here. I think Michael's going to get across this before the end of our timer, which is going to give us another lap. Yes, that should start our last lap right there. So the white flag is out. Michael Monahan currently in the lead. Greg Obadiah is shaving off some significant time. Only 1.3 seconds behind our leader. Folks, I don't know which race to watch. We have Carter Whedon, who is behind uh, David. But who's David behind? Oh, that must be it. That must be a lap car that he's passing. That should make things interesting. Looks like he's going to stay over to the inside. So our Mustang race is finished. We have Michael Monahan, Greg Obdaya, Don Manning. Right now you are seeing the end of our Miata race. Uh, up there is David, Alessandrini, behind him is Carter Whedon, and then Sam Scott. Uh, I know you see four, but that is a lapped car. And then we have Louis Alessi. Dave Fitzgerald and James Saffel for second and third for the Volkswagens. So let's bring our results up so we can see there. Michael Monahan uh, running a great race, able to keep uh, the Mustangs first, second, and third overall, and first, second, and third in class. David Alessandrini, Carter Whedon, and Sam Scott for second and third in the Miatas. Uh, and then you had Lewis, Dave, and James for second and third. Mike Kelly coming in ninth, uh, fourth overall in the Miatas. And as you see here, the next 10 in our pack, Kenneth, Rick, Peter, Ayub, sorry if I'm butchering that, I'm trying, Travis, Francois, Mark, Usama, Kevin, and Khalil. Uh, and then, yeah, the not racer, your announcer. So I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I uh, I hope you enjoyed the race. 